Thank you very much. Senator Davis, thank you. Senator Stevens, always a pleasure to serve uh, with the two of you and, and always a, a grand, grand pleasure, as a matter of fact. Um, what I wanted to do, first and foremost, is just kind of lay the groundwork a little bit with regards to protocol uh, and, and etiquette and a little bit with regards to definition. So we know exactly what it is that we're talking about uh, as we, we you know, work in the international realm. And specifically, protocol is literally the accepted uh, practices developed amongst nations in, in the course of their contact with each other. That's literally what it is. It's, it's a form of, of <coughs> communication. It's a form of interaction. And quite frankly, it's a combination of good manners and common sense at the end of the day. Uh, just always remember common sense rules uh, in, the, in this situation. Uh, it's obviously not static, uh, but rather it's an evolving science. And it continues to change day in and day out. Uh, so you always have to keep on top of things with regards to the various protocol aspects of visiting a foreign country or, or, or meeting, of course, with foreign dignitaries. So etiquette, on the other hand, though, is, is basically the body of manners and forms prescribed by custom usage or authority. Uh, it's the accepted behavior when people deal with one another. And we use etiquette on a daily basis. Um, you know, for those of us that, that deal with, um, you know, the, the international markets and, and deal with international business, uh, people, et cetera. I'm not going to lie to you. The comments from, you know, Donald Trump the last few days and the last few weeks have been a little bit earth-shattering for some of us. It's, it's, it's been a little bit difficult to take at times. But once again, etiquette protocol comes into play and you take those with a grain of salt, as, as we all should. Etiquette, of course, preserves respect for the rights and dignities of others. Uh, in short, etiquette is good manners, not artificial, and uh, a practical set of, of rules that each of us deal with on a daily basis. So in practice, protocol involves etiquette on a local and international scale and the practice of good manners on a daily <coughs> basis. The importance, though, and for those of us in the, in the room, is this, these set of rules literally prescribe good manners in official life and ceremonies involving government nations and their representatives. So it's a recognized system of international courtesy. So why is this really important to us? <clears throat> well, because like we said, first impressions, and actually Senator uh, Davis touched upon this a little bit, uh, you know, people begin to evaluate us before any words are ever spoken, uh, and especially in foreign countries. So as Emerson said, you know, who you are speaks so loudly that I don't hear a word of what you're saying. And, and that, is, that is literally true, as a matter of fact. And, and just imagine um, you know, trying to use an app to, to help with that as well. Um, but at the end of the day, though, your actions are literally a reflection of your organization, your family, your state, your country, but more importantly, you. So how do you prepare? <clears throat> We now live, of course, in the world um, you know, uh, of, of digital media, internet, uh, and there are so many <laughs> available resources. So first and foremost, you have to do your homework, obviously. So when we're dealing um, with international missions or going on various international trips, and as we're preparing not only the delegation, but as we prepare the governor to go on these, um, th these types of trips, you know, we literally provide a briefing book that ends up being about this thick at the end of the day. Um, we, we talk a little bit about the culture. We talk a little bit about the cities, the regions, the ma major provinces that he may be visiting, but even those that he isn't visiting. Um, we talk about local customs, about business <coughs> norms, about food. Senator Davis, you know, if, if jellyfish is on the menu, it's jellyfish, you know, so we, we talk a little bit about that. Um, religions, of course, demographics. And we always include in our briefing packets useful phrases. Um, it, not anything too extensive, obviously, because not everyone's going to remember that. But we do have just kind of some key items that we include. And then, of course, last but not least, uh, news and current events. Always very, very important, uh, especially with regards to uh, the countries that you're visiting. 
So how do you prepare? The available resources, you know, the state international trade or the protocol offices. You know, um, a lot of our uh, member states, all of the trade offices uh, in the United States, not all of us have protocol officers. Not every governor's office has a protocol officer. So a lot of times the trade directors and their staff will do the double duty of being able to provide protocol assistance as well as international trade assistance. In my state, um, many years ago, we used to have a protocol officer, but unfortunately we haven't had one um, for, for many years now. So all of our staff is trained um, on a regular basis with regards to, to protocol. But you can literally you know, reach out to those offices. As a matter of fact, I know Louise is from in, in stationed in Georgia. Georgia is very fortunate. They do have a protocol officer. And um, it's interestingly enough, I was able to help actually define that role for the state of Georgia many years ago. So I was always very proud of the fact that they were, they were able to hire a, a very nice uh, protocol officer there. But the resources you have available to you, even the State Highway Patrol, the State <coughs> National Guard, um, all of the U.S. Armed Forces, all branches, they deal in nothing but protocol, and especially with regards to ceremonies. And, and when it comes to flag uh, protocols as well, too, so they can help you with all of that. The White House, at the end of the day, if, if you're hosting in your state or in your city, um, you know, a, a head of state of some foreign government, the White House will help you. Um, books, internet links, associations. I wanted to just very briefly show you here. Um, I don't know how many of you can see this, but there is a book. Um, it is the, the Bible, if you will, with regards to protocol. It's, we call it the Red Book. And you can purchase this anywhere. You can order it online, basically. But it's a complete handbook of diplomatic, official, and social usage. So I encourage you uh, to utilize something like that. In addition, there's so many um, tools out there. You know, kiss, bow, and shake hands. How many of you have probably heard of that particular book? But they have them now for, for countries all around the world, not just, um, you know, in general. And shake hands. Kiss, bow, and shake hands is what it's called. It's a good little primer. Uh, <laughs> exactly. I'm sure a woman wrote it. <laughs> so getting back to kind of, you know, trying to know everything we possibly can with regards to, um, you know, the location that we're going to travel to, I want to test your local IQ. So I may kind of pick on somebody in the audience in this regard, but um, what we're asking you to do is match the following Saudi cities with the appropriate reference. So. A, of course, Jeddah is, is the city, Mecca, and then, of course, Riyadh. So let you look at that just very, very quickly. And Senator Davis, I'm going to pick on you first. Isn't it? And that's very good because that'll help some of the other audience members that don't. Correct. There you go. That is exactly right. Correct. So, <laughs> but so as you can see, these are, are, are kind of key and very important locations within Saudi Arabia. So if you were traveling there uh, on a trade mission uh, or for just various business travel, it would be important to know, and in, in even geographically where they're located, as a matter of fact, and the importance and relevance of each of these locations. So getting back to how do you prepare experience and attitude, um, obviously there is no substitute for experience. 
the more uh, you are uh, engaged in this type of activity, the more years that you have spent um, working on these types of, uh, of, of uh, events and such, uh, the more you are going to be more comfortable, more familiar, of course, with, with the day-to-day -day, uh, aspects of protocol. But just remember, manners constitute actions. Actions comprise attitudes. Attitude reflects your self-confidence, your social position with colleagues, your personal relationships. And then, of course, attitude determines success or failure at the end of the day. One of the things that we stress um, specifically um, that should have been the question to ask Senator Davis. But, um, one of the things that we stress always, uh, you know, especially with regards to our delegation members, is always check the attitude at the door before you get on that plane, on that aircraft. And when I say attitude, you know, it's it's literally that that entire um, the the, the in, in entire perspective that you may have with regards to a certain the biases that we grow up with. Um, you know, in some instances, you know, even, um, you know, some of the stereotypes that we're familiar with. It's always good to check those at the door. Uh, and if you can't check those at the door, you know, quite frankly, don't get on the plane uh, in some instances. I was recently um, in the UAE, in Dubai, and um, along with me, uh, I, I was traveling actually with a couple of our security officers. Um, from the, the governor's security detail. And you could tell one was, was a little bit biased um, because we had just been in Israel. This was kind of a unique trip. <coughs> we were in Israel and then, of course, went, went on to Dubai um, in, in preparation, of course, for, for trade missions that may take place there. So one, one of the officers, I, in, in, you know, we, we try to provide as much um, attention to, to giving them as mu much background, uh, you know, providing them as much training as we possibly can. But one of the officers was clearly biased. So, I mean, you could, you could, you could see that. And so at one point, um, you know, I, I could tell he hadn't done his homework properly. The information that we had provided wasn't thoroughly read, et cetera. You know, Israel was no problem. Israel is more uh, uh, of an informal uh, society, and so it's a little bit easier there with regards to protocol. Uh, but, you know, the, the Arab nations are not so easy with regards to protocol, and so you have to be very, very, um, you know, sensitive to a variety of factors, um, not only religion, but also, um, you know, one of the things that you should probably know is, you know, in the Arab nations, you never show the soles of your feet. That's, that's very, very offensive. Um, so at some point throughout the trip, and I could tell that he hadn't read the information because we were in a public area. There happened to be a table, chairs, but then there was an ottoman, and I saw him put his feet on the ottoman, and I just about had a heart attack. I was like, oh my God. So, um, so literally, I had to go over very discreetly and say, please remove your feet as soon as possible from that ottoman, you know, and such. And, it, and of course, he was kind of taken aback. And, and then I had to explain afterwards why that occurred. So it's, it's those types of things. And once again, without the experience, without the homework, without the basic knowledge you know, of, of, of all the, the manners and such we should follow, it's a very difficult thing to kind of know uh, in advance. So always, always do your homework. All right. <clears throat> so Senator Davis, this is probably the question I should have asked you, as a matter of fact, uh, instead of the previous one. But on a trade mission to Russia, your host offers you vodka, but due to your official capacity or personal preferences, et cetera, you must steer away from alcoholic drinks. What should you do? So I'm going to pick on Kevin. Exactly. <laughs> See, politely accept the vodka and pour it out when the host is not looking. Um, uh, well, Kevin, <laughs> that is not the correct answer. <laughs> but the correct answer is accept the vodka, but don't drink any of it. Salute, cheers, engage, as a matter of fact, but don't drink any of it. I mean, you could even put it up to your mouth if you would like. I, I will tell you 
that especially with regards to Russia, but even China, um, you know, that is, it's very offensive. And you know what? You may not close the deal at the end of the night if you're not, take, you know, partaking in this activity. So <laughs> it's, it's very interesting, um, you know, in that respect. But just, you know, even with regards to, I, I mentioned earlier, our security detail. Uh, and all of the governors have them, et cetera, even they at times are expected to, to salute, um, you know, or, or, you know, engage in the toast that, that does take place. So it's, it's a very difficult thing, but just accept it and don't drink any of it. Um, you know, even the hosts at the end of it, they, they understand the sensitivities of, of, you know, engaged and involved in that. So again, so again, kind of proceeding with how to prepare common sense, obviously, always act with reason and respect. The golden rule, always treat others as you would like to be treated, but more importantly, the platinum rule, treat others as they would like to be treated. That is, that, you know, that's what all of this is about, quite frankly. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the political figure IQ, because that, that kind of ranks in, in this as well, too, uh, knowing everything you can about a particular market that you're traveling to. So, you know, in 2004, the Italian um, prime minister drew a lot of attention back, you know, about 11 years ago. Miss Julie. <laughs> After four years of legal battles, he was cleared of charges of corruption. That is a very, very good guess. Exactly. And at the time, the 67-year-old, you know, thanked his wife, Veronica, because uh, she convinced him to have uh, uh, plastic surgery. This was in all of the papers. This was everywhere you turned <coughs> around. It was on the news, as a matter of fact. Uh, and we happened to be there at this time, and that's all, you, uh, that's all you, know, you heard about in the press and such. You know? and, and the Italians, of course, being as finicky as they can be sometimes, you know, it was very interesting to kind of get their take on, on the plastic surgery as well. But, like, that was a very, very good one. <laughs> exactly. So always, <laughs> always do your, um, you know, do your homework and such. So, at the end of the day, what I wanted to kind of leave you with, obviously, you know, missions are literally high stress exercises. Murphy's Law prevails always, but compounded with local uh, nuances, as a matter of fact, always. Um, you know, airport arrivals and departures. Um, as uh, as um, Senator Davis mentioned just a little while ago, obviously, um, you know, in airports and such, we utilize expediters when the governor is traveling. So expediters then have you know the VIP lounges and are able to get him off the plane and in a in a very um, you know quick and efficient manner, uh, as as well as uh, a variety of other things. So that entails a lot of other logistical support, but even some protocol aspects that you have to deal with when all of that occurs. More importantly than, you know, the itinerary, the meeting locations. One thing to keep in mind if you're ever working on an itinerary is if one of your team was lost, if one of the delegation members got, um, literally uh, got away from the rest of the group, would they be able to look at that <coughs> itinerary and know exactly where to go next or what to do next? Would they know to go get a cab? Would they know to actually get public transportation, get on the subway or anything to that effect? So we take all of that into consideration because it does happen. And, um, you know, and it's, it's very important that you always keep the delegation together. Uh, transportation logistics, a huge, huge part of what we do. Always very important uh, because we need to make sure that we're moving everyone efficiently from one location to the next. And um, you know, in, in China, in, and I don't know if on this last trip, you know, Senator Davis, you all were able to see this, but, you know, just a small little communications glitch can, like, really um, cause a lot of heartache, especially, you know, in this instance, it was probably Andy, as a matter of fact, that was helping to kind of put everything together. Um, <laughs> when, when you're dealing with a transportation company, and especially if you have a caravan, 
for the delegation. You've got, let's say, the lead car, and then you've got the, the rest of the delegation that, you know, the lead car probably has the principal or the, you know, the, the governor, the first lady, whatever the case may be. Um, in China, they, 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 um, they don't always follow uh, directions as we kind of lay them out. And the reason for that is it's, it's, it's communication is what it really is. I mean, it boils down to the fact that maybe their English skills aren't at the level where they need to be, so the driver doesn't always catch everything that you're saying. So when we say, keep the caravan together, we want one car right after the other, right after the other, I mean, it ends up being a high-speed chase to the next location, uh, quite frankly. So you always have to spell things out very, very, um, in, in, in detailed manner, quite frankly. Uh, hospitality events, formal functions, obviously a whole other <laughs> level of protocol and, and activity. The delegation members each need to be briefed on their uh, actions, um, you know, and their roles and responsibilities, of course, during the, 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 the trip. Communication challenges we just talked about, you know, just with the drivers, et cetera, uh, but even utilizing an app, um, you know, and even with regards to something that uh, Senator Davis brought up earlier, and that, of course, you know, when you do hire an interpreter overseas, always make certain that it is from a reputable firm, that someone uh, in, in hopefully at one of uh, our consulates or embassies, the U.S. Uh, consulate or embassy has referred them, or if you can afford it, take someone from here in the United States that is very well uh, and, and capable and able, of course, to do the translation for you, someone that you can trust because it is critically important. And then last but not least, security concerns, challenges, <laughs> all of that plays into um, you know, literally preparing uh, for a trade mission uh, and challenges uh, involved in that.